Hello, we are back with another oil painting, although right now you're seeing me use acrylic paint, technically. That's because you have to prime a canvas and then do a base layer before you start painting properly. For most, most mediums you have to do that. And I like to do the base layer in acrylic, just to give the oil paint something to sit on, I guess. I think that's the word I want. Anyway, that's why you're seeing me do a base layer in acrylic right now. We'll get into using oil paint in a minute or two. I hope you can hear me, and I really hope I don't have to re-record this, because I've now tried three different microphones, and I tried recording this fully twice, and I did like 10 test clips, and my, my computer just wasn't picking up my voice at all. So can you hear me now? I hope so. I guess if you're watching this video, then it did work, so it's all good. So here we go. I'm using oil now. I'm doing a dark layer over the top of the acrylic paint I put on because I felt like the acrylic was too bright. It was too bright and too rainbowy, and I really, really wanted this to be more muted, which is kind of laughable now because I ended up making it really rainbowy anyway. So there was a jump there where we skipped a big bit of the painting. I'm sorry about that. Um, this video was kind of a difficult one to make because I was working on two paintings side by side, which if you've watched my other videos, you know I do that a lot. But I was working on this one and a companion piece that will be up next week. But I was working on them both at the same time because I wanted them to be in the same palette. So rather than doing two paintings separately and using the same basic palette for them, I wanted to use literally the same palette. So I would do a layer of paint on this canvas and then swap out the canvases and use the exact same palette to paint a layer on the other one and then swap them back and so on. Which did make them look as similar as I'd hoped. They're very obviously a set, but it was a real, real pain to separate out the footage, so I am sorry that there is some of it missing. But you still get to see, like, the main part of it, and a lot of the interesting parts. To me, anyway, I think you get to see the interesting parts. Let me know if you disagree. So, what I'm painting today is the Pokemon Sinistee. It's one of the new ones from Pokemon Sword and Shield. It's a ghost type based on a little broken teacup and I absolutely love this guy. I think it's the cutest. It might be my absolute favourite of the new ones, honestly. That and um, the new Zigzagoon because <laughs> he's a little goth and I, I love a goth Pokemon. But anyway, this is Sinistee and I wanted to do it in a sort of still life style painting. I was really inspired by a lot of classical, you know, traditional paintings of still lives, I guess. Flowers, vases, teacups, you know the kind of thing that you see everywhere in museums. I really like those kind of paintings and I wanted this to be, to resemble those, but also be Pokemon fan art. So that maybe, if you didn't know it was a Pokemon, you'd think it was just an old still life. But if you do know it's Pokemon, then, then you know, and you're in on the joke, I guess. But obviously my sort of rainbow sickness took hold and it didn't come out very classical looking. I swear to you, I genuinely tried to make this darker and more muted and I genuinely tried to limit my palette. I didn't even put any of my bright reds on the palette to begin with. I, I just didn't even put them on the palette. They weren't there. But I still ended up with a lot of red and pink and... <sighs> well, well, what can you do, eh? I think for 2020, I want to really practice working in a limited palette. I'm going to do a lot of monochrome paintings, things with just one colour, maybe two, 
definitely not all three primaries, which isn't a limited palette, and anybody who tells you it is, is lying. But, <laughs> was that harsh? I don't know. But, yeah, I really, every single new painting I do, I think to myself, this time I'm going to limit my colours, and this time I'm going to make it darker, and this time I'm going to make it more old school and traditional looking, and every single time it's even brighter and more rainbowy than the last one. <laughs> Which isn't necessarily a bad thing, I know a lot of people really like that about my paintings, but personally I just want to know that I can do both if, if I want to. You know, I would like to know that I can work in a more limited palette if I really try. So for 2020, that's what I'm going to try and learn with my painting. I'm not going to say it's like a resolution or anything, it's just something I plan on doing. Which I guess is a resolution, so it is a resolution. What am I talking about? <laughs> Do you have any resolutions made for 2020 yet? Anything you want to practice? any art goals, do let me know. I'm always interested to hear from you. So, the reason it's been a while since I posted any oil painting was because I had this idea in my head that I was going to move all my oil painting videos to Vimeo or to some other video platform and I wanted my YouTube to be primarily focused on fashion and clothing and makeup and any art that I posted on YouTube was going to have to be centered around those themes so you know drawings of people in alternative fashions and box openings like scrawler box and ink reviews and stuff that are more YouTube's kind of thing I was going to keep all that here and then do oil painting on a different different other platform maybe even just on a different channel. And then ultimately, I I don't know, it's just too much. I can't be bothered. Which sounds really silly and really lazy, but I, I don't know, I just don't want to have too many different things to maintain. And I've already got so many oil painting videos up on this channel that I don't think it detracts too much from the other things I do. As much as all the advice you get for being successful on any social media platform is to streamline your content and do one thing and really focus on that one thing, I would love to do that and I know that's a really good idea in theory, but gosh, I don't know, I just really, I really don't want to have a thousand different channels that I have to maintain, you know? I mean, I do have several different channels and side things, but I'm not taking them seriously, is the point. I only take this channel seriously, and this is the only one that I schedule my posts for and that I plan my videos for. Give me your thoughts on that too, though. Let me know if you like having all my different videos in one place. Do you like watching oil painting as well as illustration? as well as fashion DIY, as well as makeup? Or do you kind of wish that I separated it out? Because I will take your opinions on board. Especially if you're a Patreon. A Patreon? A patron. <laughs> I I'm not going to sugarcoat that, you know. If you're paying me, you your opinion holds more weight. But either way, do, do let me know. Leave me a comment. I'll still take your opinion into consideration, even if you're not a patron. And even then, I might still just leave it all in one place anyway. Who knows? Who knows what the future holds? Anyway, I didn't really t tell you much about the actual process here, did I? I'm almost at the end of this painting already. I'll tell you more about the actual subject matter in next week's video because next week's video will be the companion piece to this one because I painted Poltegeist as well as Sinisty. It's the evolved form of this Pokemon in case you aren't aware. Let me know if you've been playing the new Pokemon games as well. 
Okay, thank you for being here. Bye!